Hey guys, welcome back. Learning a lot about Tiptronic transmissions today. So this is the transmission that I removed. I'm gonna show you a couple things that I learned about removing it and how it's very different from a manual transmission. So this thing here, the big old donut, is a torque converter. And uh, so let me show you how I got to this part real quick. Welcome back guys. We're going to be removing the transmission from this engine in this episode. And I just read a comment from somebody, thanks for commenting guys, that said that they didn't think that you could, or they had read that you could not remove the transmission separately from the engine while it was still in the car on a Tiptronic. So um, I did notice that the Tiptronic has a lot more crap on the top of it than my manual did when I took that transmission out. Uh, so I think we just have a separate cooler here attached to the top of it with some hard-ish lines that run to our engine block. We have this top one that has a weird looking connector here that runs through here and up onto our little ring uh, mount thing. And that is just attached with a 10, that's just attached with this 10 millimeter over here, it looks like. Um, I don't know what this thing is. What is this guy? It's just some kind of like vent kind of thing. I don't know what that is. So it looks like it should be easy to detach from there. And then this one, and this one come down here together and attach uh, to more solid tubing that goes under the engine block. And they just have two hose clamps here. So I guess I'm just gonna try to remove them. Oh, top or bottom, top or bottom. I don't know which one I'll try to remove. Uh, maybe the bottom one and I'll try to lift it up so that I have a little more flexibility because these seem to be pinned down there. I don't think I'm going to be able to move those pipes. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try to disconnect those two. And that seems to be the only <laughs> obvious difference as far as disconnecting this thing. So I don't know why you wouldn't be able to remove it. Um, this was still in the car. So I don't know. You guys let me know if you know something that I don't know. Just FYI on removing this bolt, I had to go back to my old video to remember how I did it. I had to take a 10 millimeter wrench and put it around the shaft of this uh, 10 millimeter, um, what do you call these bolts, the T-squares. And then I had to use a long handle to get enough leverage on it and I could get that off. So. Same as the uh, manual transmission, except the only difference is I couldn't fit this end around it on the manual because there was not enough clearance in here. So this one is shaped a little differently. All right, so just to document what I did here, I pulled that uh, hose clamp off. These are my new favorite hose clamp tools, by the way. It's just this little, uh, alligator looking lock guy. So I set it to the uh, correct distance and just lock it on that ring and that way I can move it up and down without having to keep squeezing it. So it makes it really handy. Then I disconnected this bolt, which was a T40 and the one back here that was a T40, just these two. So this one is a bracket and this one is the actual uh, connector here and that way it was free and I could twist it and it made it easier just to grab here and pull straight up and uh, got that disconnected. And when you do, you're gonna get more coolant coming out of here and uh, out of here and actually got some coming out of over there as well because I guess it relieves some pressure. So uh, one down, just disconnect the one in the back in a similar manner. This bolt was holding both brackets. So there's a bracket to the one behind it so this one should be uh, a little looser and flexible. 
rest of these big bolts are 16 millimeter. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove them and keep them in order because they're all different. All right, those are all simple to remove, all 16 millimeter. Now what we have left down here, where the arrow is right here, is uh, a 15 millimeter nut. So there is a stud on the transmission that goes through this hole in your block. And that's the last thing to remove. So when you pull this transmission out, you gotta pull it straight back to uh, get that stud through the hole and everything will be disconnected. Now there's very little room to get a wrench back here and it is uh, not enough clearance to get this end of the wrench on. So it's gonna be uh, tough. So if you are removing your transmission or you might be removing your transmission, my suggestion is loosen that nut before removing all of this. And the very last thing to be disconnected is this wire running to here. So uh, you can pull it off of any of these ends, I assume. And I'll just pull it off of here. That seems to be the easiest one. All right, so we'll just disconnect this guy. It's a 10 millimeter. So uh, I guess that can stay on there. And when this comes out, it will just go down right through there nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on here. All right, so supposedly we can just pull it straight back, take it over there. I think everything is disconnected. I'm gonna say that's more than 150 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say that's heavier than the, that's a lot heavier than the manual. Now, as soon as I got that off, I started doing some research on how to get this thing off. And uh, should have done that first, I guess. Well, I don't think it really mattered, but I should have done it first because they say that you're not supposed to move, remove the bell housing without this. Uh, I guess that's just because you could damage the parts inside if you're not careful. I don't know exactly their reasoning, but I learned that the way, the only way to get this thing off is you have to remove the alternator and then through the alternator, you can stick some hex keys, uh, and remove the, these two bolts. There's one here and one here. Can't even see them, they're on the back here. They have a hex head that goes in there. The only way to access them is to rotate this to over here so you can get the tool in from the back to undo those bolts. So there's two there, two down here, and then two on the other side. So there's six of them. So you have to rotate the engine like 120 degrees uh, or whatever that math is to get all of those off. You may know if you've been following my broken Boxster series, that this engine is jacked up and the crank will not turn. Something bad happened to it. So that's why I'm disassembling it to figure out what happened to it. But because I can't turn the crank, I cannot get to those bolts to remove that, which means I cannot put this thing on my engine stand yet, which uh, I was really hoping to do so I could flip this thing around and get better access to things. But we're gonna make do and start disassembling on this table. So um, if you are interested in learning about your Boxster engine, make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow along, and uh, you'll get lots of detailed video on how to do it. So unfortunately, uh, I don't have a really detailed video on how to remove this like I do on most of my videos. I have a full transmission removal video for a manual Boxster, which, most of the basic steps are the same to get to the point of getting this. Um, I've also heard people say that you can't, that you have to lower them both, get them both out of the engine to take this off, which, um, I mean, like anything, it's easier that way. But again, even with this, I don't see why you couldn't take the alternator off while it's still in there. I've done that before and get to those bolts. Um, 
because the way you're supposed to do it is still have the belt housing on here and it's it would be just as hard with this in the car i think to see when those bolts are lined up uh either way huge pain in the ass to remove the transmission from a tiptronic